Okay, so Munker has sent me his latest build, and this is Munker Jaro version 1.2 beta. And uh, at the moment, it's running from an SSD drive. You can see it's plugged in here, uh, and this is going into my Pi 400. I'll put it on the Pi 4 as well, just to show you that it works on both. SSD, USB boot is supported straight off. So let's switch over to screen capture. So if you haven't seen any of Munker's builds before, uh, if you look at my channel, I'll put links in the description. And uh, also I'll put a link to the download when it becomes available. So this is beta at the moment. So Munker must be clearing a few things up before general release. Uh, but let's flick through and have a look. Uh, in fact, let's have a look first of all uh, and see if anything's been overclocked or anything's been changed. So we'll go to file system and boot and config.txt. So the settings that have been applied extra, so force turbo equals one, arm frequency 2147, GPU frequency 650, and over voltage of eight. Uh, and so this is running, as I said before, on the Pi 400, but I'll be able to just put it straight into my Pi 4 uh, because I've got cooling on that as well. So the Pi 400 uses that big heatsink underneath the keyboard, so that should keep it cool enough. Uh, right, let's close that down. I like all this dark theme. Um, you know, so everything with the backgrounds are all black it looks really smart. Uh, the way all this looks, I couldn't find my network drive. So whatever I do here, there must be something else you have to do in Manjaro. I couldn't, I couldn't find it logically, and I like to be able to find my NAS drive uh, without any fuss. Uh, but I'm sure it's pretty easy, and I could always look it out. But I like to do these things where I just have a first look at them and and sort of flick through and see what's there. Uh, so we go into settings, everything is pretty standard. What do the um, settings manager look like in Manjaro? Oh yeah? Yeah, pretty nice, pretty logical. Everything's all easily laid out. So accessories, uh, we've got Raspberry Pi Imager, which I love because uh, it's uh, it wouldn't come in Manjaro. I'm not sure if it's an easy install into Manjaro, but Monk has done that already. So it's just the standard Raspberry Pi Imager. Everybody should have that for the Pi. Catfish file search, so this is like a general search and you can see it's got a Cortana button down there as well. So you can search for content on your Pi, whether that's files, folders, apps, things like that. Uh, development, not something I really get into. Uh, games, this is always something that's strong in Monka's builds. Dolphin emulator, so Wii and GameCube, that'll be interesting to have a look at. Uh, Amiberry, so an Amiga emulator. DOSBox, so to run old DOS games. Duck Station, which is a PlayStation emulator I haven't seen before. And Munker mentioned this uh, in what what's new in this. And uh, it actually runs on the, uh, the newest Vulkan driver, uh, which is already installed on here. So I'll have a look at that, uh, because the Vulkan driver so far has generally been slower than OpenGL on most things on the Pi. But it's it, it keeps getting updated. N64, uh, arcade emulator, Game Boy Advance. Uh, Moonlight, which I keep meaning to do, but I'd, I have to, it streams games from a PC, so you can, uh, a bit like Steam Link, um, but it does say NVIDIA Game Stream enabled PC, so I don't know if it's crucial that you need NVIDIA to be able to do that. Uh, I'll have to look into that. OpenRA June 2000 and Red Alert, which is excellent, I love Red Alert, uh, and Tiberian Dawn as well. Uh, PPSSP, so PSP emulator, one of the best emulators on the Pi. There's no Dreamcast emulator here, which is interesting. Maybe that's something that will be added. Uh, so this is very good for the graphical adventure games. Uh, oh, RetroArch is there, and RetroArch, uh, one can mention that uh, Vulcan is working on that as well. So that will be interesting to see. SNES emulator, Atari, and another Game Boy Advance. Yeah, another Game Boy Advance. Uh, so let's go to graphics. LibreOffice Jaw, GNU. Internet, we've got the Chromium Media Edition, so we get things like Netflix. Right, well, he's actually putting there like Netflix, Disney Plus, uh, so uh, encrypted things. So that's that's great because that's probably not easy to install in Manjaro. Discord link is there. Firefox, as well as a web browser. So this Chromium Media Edition you would use for those streaming services. Everything else you'd pretty much use Firefox for. VNC. Multimedia, so yeah, lots of things in here. Nice to see VLC, nice to see Winamp installed. Oh, yeah, and it is the uh, it is the Windows style version. Office, we've got full LibreOffice on there, which is nice to see. 
and Anbox is in here. This is something that's been added, uh, which is basically Android running in a container uh, on your Pi. So you can install basic apps. I haven't tried any games or anything like that on it, but, uh, but it is running Android within this system. There you go. And so you could, you could download APKs and uh, have a play around with that and install things into it. But it's uh, from the quick look that I looked at it, it does seem to be working pretty well. And when you go to shut down, uh, we have uh, these options here. So we've got the shutdown option there. Settings is in there. Lock screen. Yeah, every, everything's very logical. Also, things like uh, Gparted uh, is already installed. So if I click on that, I think I've already uh, expanded the partition. So sometimes when you download something for Raspberry Pi, uh, it doesn't use the full space of the hard disk. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one didn't didn't use the full space of the hard disk, so I had to expand the partition. But I've got a separate video on Gparted and how that works. But nice to see it already installed. I think this was a show desktop down the bottom. Oh yeah, it just came out with show desktop, didn't it? So let's click on Firefox. Let's go for something with a bit of movement in it. So something with a bit of screen capture in it. So this is 1080. Oh yeah, 1080 is a bit is a bit choppy. Yeah, it struggles at 1080. So let's drop that down to 720. Yeah, 720 works all right, but it does struggle with 1080. I haven't messed around with any other any other settings or anything like that. 1080 not so good, uh, but it does work pretty well at 720. Uh, but I haven't messed around with any of the other settings. Right, so let's close that down. Uh, and I think what we'll do is switch over to the Raspberry Pi 4. I've got an 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4, uh, and I'll shut this down and start it up on that just to show that it works on both. Okay, so let's unplug everything. So we've got HDMI and USB-C. Uh, this is the controller, my Xbox controller, which I need to plug in there, uh, which is this wireless one. I mentioned it, it's, it's my favorite for using for RetroPie and things like that. And the SSD drive, so let's plug that in here. And I'm using my Dynamode uh, SATA cable just because it was longer between these two. I normally use my CSL cable because it's a lot neater in here. Uh, so let's plug in the HDMI and the USB-C and the controller can plug in. I'll plug that into a USB two socket. Let's move my mouse out of the way. So audio I'm going to take from my capture device uh, and I'm going to record the, the mic audio separately. And I think that's everything I need. Xbox controller on. Oh, and I need to get rid of this keyboard and switch over my Ethernet cable because I generally tend to use Ethernet. Um, I sometimes use Wi-Fi, but you know, Ethernet is just straightforward. Let's plug that in the right way up and switch keyboards. So I put these ROMs folders on the desktop so I can run with the emulators. This doesn't come with any ROMs. Uh, the only, it does come with those games, uh, so like the Red Alert and Dune and uh, Tiberium Sun, but uh, the rest of it you have to provide your own ROMs. So uh, actually I was gonna have a look at, at RetroArch because I haven't tried it on this yet. Uh, so let's see if my controller works straight away. Nope, so I need to go into settings and input. Port one controls. Let's recognize my Xbox 360. So uh, now we've got to configure it. So B button, Y button. Oh look, we have trigger controls in here now, which I haven't seen before. Right, so I think that's enough. Now have I got control? Yeah, I've got controller now. So have we got, oh yeah, it looks like all the cores are installed. So there's three, two Sony PlayStation emulators. So let's try Beetle and load content. Home Pi. Desktop. PS1. And a bit of Dave Mirror. Okay, that didn't work for me. Let's try another RetroArch. Ah, 
Ah, so it looks like it's going to work with PCSX. And I've got my audio there, so I need to turn off the sound. Let's see if we go full screen with this and see if that looks all right. Oh, it looks nice. So PlayStation often looks really quite ragged uh, on a 1080 screen, uh, but this is looking quite smooth, certainly in the menus. Let's see what happens when we get into the game. Oh, so it's <laughs> back to normal in the game. Oh, speed's all right though. Yeah, that's working well. One of my favourite games of all time. It's just it's just the overall quality of the graphics that don't really, you know, PlayStation, as I said, looks a bit ragged, but the gameplay's there, and uh, it's still one of the best BMX games of all time, and one of my favourite games. So let's, how do I quit out of that? Press escape and escape again. So Munker mentioned, and he might add in the comments, uh, a lot of new features like Anbox, Duck Station, Amiberry, RetroArch with Vulcan support. So I don't know which bits are supported with Vulcan, but as I say, you might add that in the comments. Uh, so let's just go back in and have a quick look at N64. And let's try a bit of V-Rally. All oh, the audio's a bit, uh, bit sketchy. Sometimes can be on this. I think it's all right in the game. Oh, it's a bit slow, so I need to play around with some of the settings on that. Yeah, it is a lot too slow. Right, let's have a look at some of the standalone emulators on here. So let's quit out of that. And because uh, I did notice that with that duck station, so if I go into settings, display settings, there you go, look, hardware Vulcan. So it is already selected and uh, it was on default and I changed it to V3D 4.2. Didn't seem to make any difference on that. Uh, and I turned on uh, frames per second. So let's start disk, Pi, desktop, PS1, Dave Mirror. So, whoa, it really garbled audio on that. But looking very crisp. Again, this is a beta, um, but it's great to see uh, Vulcan coming on and being introduced to more and more things. Oh yeah, it is, so it is running slow, look. Looks better though. I'd rather play it looking like this, but obviously with the speed. And obviously as the Vulcan driver comes along, all that sort of stuff will be sorted out. So, you know, expect really good performance and looking good as well. Yeah, it definitely looks crisper. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna continue playing that because obviously it is a bit slower, but great to see it. Uh, as these new Vulcan drivers coming out are being added to these emulators. Uh, PPSSPP, I saw more improvement on because when I tried Vulcan before with PPSSPP, I really didn't think it was good at all. Um, but I think it's actually looking pretty good and uh, and it's it's working better as well now. So one thing I love about PPSSPP is that you have these uh, load states so I've been playing a little bit of this so I can go straight back into it. There you go, so this, you can see the performance of this is much better. Let's see if we can bank this corner. Oh, <laughs> that's a weird. And it did actually, I found it, it wasn't terrible on two times the render. So if I, no, which one is it? So if I press select, and go to settings. Uh, oh, so we're on OpenGL at the moment, so let's switch that to Vulkan and restart. Yeah, so considering this is Vulkan, Vulkan was terrible on PPSSPP before. Better bank in that time. And I thought, oh, a bit of a slowdown there. And you do get these weird slowdowns with GTA at different points on PPSSPP with certain settings. But if I go back out of that, Oh, wrong button. Uh, settings and so there's no frame skipping on that. And if I change the rendering resolution to two times to two times P PSP uh, and then go back in, here you see that it looks really sharp uh, and it's it's nearly playable. It's a bit you can hear the audio is stuttery, 
Um, but for two times PSP, I thought that worked all right. Now I'd play it in the one, and I'd put frame skip on. But maybe this is the Vulcan driver as it keeps it starts getting better. Maybe we are going to see uh, it it become playable, but with these higher resolutions because PPSS PP does look great if you if you up that uh, resolution. Okay, so great work, Munker. Another great build. Uh, look out for the download link, which will be added to the comments, and I'll pin the comment uh, when Munker makes that available. But at the moment, you can't download this yet. Uh, but it needs a little bit of work. Uh, but once that's done and things have been improved and tweaked, then uh, it will be released. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.